Today, I'll be talking about investing um, with Ariana Grande's Seven Rings music video and the British luxury brand Burberry as our guides to investing. So uh, let's get started with a small exercise. So everybody close your eyes, imagine a day in your dream life. Maybe you wake up, um, you take a leisurely cup of coffee and you slowly ease into your work routine. Or um, maybe you don't work at all anymore because you've decided to retire to a small house by the sea in Bali. Um, maybe you walk your dog. Um, you, or you might have started a family and you really enjoy the ample time that you have with them um, and achieving that work-life balance. Um, perhaps you're thriving in work that you find meaningful and absolutely love. So I'll give you a few moments to think about that unique life that you envision for yourself. Um, so everybody open your eyes um, and please share some of those um, visions that you have in the chat. I would love to um, read them out and share them with people in this group. I see ones that says there are a few horses, lake house. These all sound really fun, by the way. And summer is coming, so it's great. Um, retire early, um, small goat farm. Yeah, I mean, these are all very exciting. Um, and what if I told you that this will happen and oh, travel and much sooner than you think? Um, and that is exactly what financial um, independence and investing does. It helps you materialize those beautiful visions that you have into reality so that you can finally live it. Now, I want to show of hands of how many of you have ever felt anxiety, fear, or shame about money. Um, and I also invite you to share those feelings in the chat if you're comfortable. Um, I'll start with myself. Um, so uh, right after college, I was working 80 hours a week um, in finance. And when you count out the hourly wage that I was making, I was making less than minimum wage. And during that time, I was really resentful towards my job. Um, I didn't know how I was ever going to make enough money to have a place of my own, which is a value that I um, held dear to my heart. But also to um, be able to pay for healthcare expenses that I needed for myself. Um, and as women, people of color, and members of the queer and disabled community, really anyone who um, fits in one of the marginalized communities, we have been socialized to think that we are greedy for wanting to earn more money or that money is evil. So I'm going to shower this belief harder than Ariana Grande broke the internet with her Seven Rings music video. And if you all haven't seen that video, please go on YouTube, check it out. It is very well worth your five minutes. Um, so in Aria, Ariana Grande's music video, there is a lyric that says, my receipt be looking like phone numbers. And uh, Beyonce also has a music video for her um, ape shit song, uh, which we'll get into later, um, where she's just rocking her Burberry tights at the Louvre. And when we think of these women, I highly doubt that any of us think they're evil for having money. If anything, we think they're fabulous for owning their status the way they do. Um, and the overwhelming odds that they were able to overcome to achieve su such success. Um, and when women are able to step into wealth, we all benefit. Um, an example is at the beginning of the pandemic, um, when not only were there not vaccines, um, there weren't even enough tests. And Beyonce actually donated a lot of COVID tests to our very own King County. So that helped flatten the curve um, that identified infections early, which um, inevitably led to less strain on hospitals and saved lives because early detection means the reduce of virus spread. Um, so in having such wealth and generosity with that wealth, Beyonce saved a lot of lives in our own um, county. Um, and we as 80s have benefited from this as well. Um, think about the donations that we've received from wealthy women like Melinda Gates or Mackenzie Scott. 
I don't think a lot of us would be sitting here right now um, attending this talk if it wasn't for such generosity that helped Ada thrive. And now we're even able to expand to Atlanta, which is really exciting so that we can serve an even larger population. Our own Ada alums are also fundamental to this um, beautiful and um, vibrant Ada alum community. Um, I myself have experienced this. When I was applying for Ada, I got a lot of meaningful advice about what that uh, interview process was like. Um, during Ada, I had the support of the Ada staff and my classmates. And even after Ada, um, I had a rough patch during the pandemic and um, my friends at the Ada community were able to help me apply for jobs and interview. And I'm sure a lot of you have had similar experiences to this. All of this is to say that when marginalized people um, make more money, everybody wins. So now let's take a closer look at Beyonce. So here's a gift from her Ape Shit music video. Um, it's shot at the Louvre. Beyonce and her entourage of beautiful black women are dancing um, in this gift, and Beyonce is rocking a very gorgeous uh, Burberry matching set. Um, and the music video itself is really great. It's beautifully shot. The choreography is well coordinated um, and the lyrics are catchy. But more importantly is the symbolism. So if you look at the painting in the background, it's of Empress Josephine, who was uh, Napoleon's wife. And this is during her uh, coronation. If you take an even closer look, you'll notice that there are no people of color and art historically has only focused on people of privilege, which is why it's so powerful when Beyonce decided to put herself and her entourage at the forefront. She is rewriting what wealth and power looks like. She's rocking her Burberry tights and expressing herself authentically with powerful lyrics, beats, and choreography. With this music video, she is writing her own story. And in the story, she shows how young Black women can thrive, inspire others, and create deep meaning with her wealth. More importantly, Beyonce normalizes the concept that members of marginalized communities can become wealthy and powerful. And the very fact that this was shot in the Louvre is also a major accomplishment because the Louvre is one of the most famous art museums in the world. And when the Kardashians tried to rent it out for their wedding, they got shot down. So um, Beyonce also shows um, the amount of influence that she's been able to achieve. So this is an example of how we can use wealth to write our own representative narratives um, and live out the values that we hold dear to our heart. In Beyonce's case, it's creating beautiful art, providing representation, and redefining what's possible for her community. So as we observe this powerful work of art, think about what narrative you want to write for yourself. I have a feeling that most of us love Beyonce, and we don't think any less of her for the wealth and overwhelming success that she's been able to achieve. How will additional financial resources enable you to live by your values? What kind of empowering story do you want to tell yourself with your future wealth? And please do share this in the chat. So uh, I want to share a story about myself and my financial journey. Uh, 2020 for me, like for most of us, was extremely difficult. Uh, in February of 2020, I had just graduated ADA. I was fresh off of a breakup and a car accident, and I had less than $3,000 in cash in my bank account. My one light at the end of the tunnel was that I had signed on to a six-figure job in tech after um, a hard year ADA and completing um, my tech internship. I signed a year's apartment lease and was really excited to move out of my parents' house because having a place of my own was something that I always dreamed of. Then one month later, in March of 2020, uh, the pandemic hit and I was furloughed. I didn't sleep at all that night. And to be honest, I was quite heartbroken. It was a very arduous year between having limited income, a history of jobs that did not respect boundaries, being in an abusive relationship, um, and just the uncertainty um, of a career transition. I was forced to sell off my investments during that market crash um, in 2020 to keep myself afloat and pay my rent. However, I did find comfort in um, my community, especially my friends at Ada, and the financial safety net that I built through investments. Um, now that we're here in 2022, I'm very glad to say that things are a lot brighter. I survived furlough, I increased my net worth six times over, and I bought a condo. 
Um, a big reason why I got through this difficult time was because I started investing early. Um, I invested several years before the pandemic um, and had enough time to um, retrieve gains from the market so that even though I was forced to sell off my investments during the market crash, I didn't lose any money. I was able to sell off my stocks and get myself through this difficult time. And during times when I was really stressed out at work um, after um, my furlough ended and I ended up going back to work, um, I found relief um, at the idea that I still had this financial safety net. As I went back to work, I continued contributing um, to my investments with the knowledge that if I ever needed a break um, and to respect my mental health, I could do that. My investments also gave me the courage to buy my own home. Um, and that ended up being a very fortunate decision because since the year that I've lived here, it's increased $30,000 in value. So for me, investing has empowered me to work in jobs that I enjoy and to build a safe space for myself that I call home. And I wanna show all of you how to build that safety net for yourselves so that you can be resilient through life's unexpected events and live in freedom, abundance, and bliss. So I've shared a bit about my own story with investing and through um, the power of wealth uh, with women like Beyonce, but um, there are other reasons that we should all invest. One is to beat inflation. When I made this PowerPoint, it was at about 6.8%. Last I checked, it's north of 7%. So inflation is only increasing as we speak. Um, and inaction doesn't protect your money, it keeps it vulnerable. Even if you think you're playing it safe by putting it in a high yield savings account that gives you 0.5% in returns, which means that you are losing over 6% to inflation still. And the only way to beat that is through investing where you typically get um, a return of 10% per year. Uh, more importantly, it allows you to live by your values. 80s are very strong people with, um, beautiful and grand visions. And in my uh, conversations with some of you, here is what I heard. Um, one is to leave unfulfilling jobs and situation at will, to really um, take hold of that autonomy uh, and freedom to make important life decisions without the constraint of money. Um, some of you want to build your own businesses, others want to provide for themselves and their families. And I also tapped into a small expat community here at Ada. Um, and one of you shared that you want to move abroad and buy a small lovely house where you can enjoy the sunny weather and plant orange trees um, in the front yard. And that is just such beautiful and quaint um, aspiration. A lot of us are also involved in um, many charitable causes and investing and earning more enables us to make bigger impact with both our dollars and um, our other uh, avenues of volunteering. So all of this is to say, I want you to design your dream life, fund it with investments and finally live it. So investment is really great. Um, let's talk about how this works. Um, the magic ingredient here is oops, uh, compound interest. So the market on average returns 10% uh, per year. So let's have an example. Say you start with $100,000. After year one, you'll have $110, and then that $110 will grow in our 10% and so on and so on. It's like a snowball. Once you get it rolling, um, the ball gets bigger, which makes it uh, to continue to get bigger still. And by uh, the end of 30 years, you would have increased your original investment by 1,745%. That is pretty dang good for just parking your money in an investment account and not doing much with it. And if you invested $63,000 today, you'll become a millionaire in 30 years. Um, and investing gets even better when we talk about tax advantage accounts. So I'm talking about HSAs, 401ks, um, and IRAs. So by investing through these accounts, you will become a tax-free millionaire. You won't owe any taxes. When people think of stocks, um, they tend to think of a enormous brokerage account, and that's not uh, tax efficient at all. You actually lose a lot of money in taxes. The money that you invest has already been taxed through federal taxes, and any money you gain is also taxed again as well. But none of you here are going to do that because you all are smart and you're going to leverage these tax advantage accounts so you can keep all the money that you make and make big impact with your dollars. And with a lot of these accounts, your employer will often match your investments, um, giving you free money and helping you grow your money tree faster. Um, 
And for a lot of um, these accounts, you can also withdraw money at any time that you need. So think about it as you're growing your money tree and picking off of it as you need. There really is uh, a good reason to not invest. Uh, I will now address a big objection that I hear uh, when it comes to investing, fear of losing out. I will call that FOLO. Um, a lot of you say that investing feels like gambling or that you're afraid of losing money in the stock market. Um, the stock market has returned 10% on average every year for the last 100 years. That is longer than any of us here have been alive. And if you call that gambling, please take me to that casino. I'd love to gamble there every day. I'd still come out ahead. Um, and it's only gambling if you invest it in meme stocks like GameStop, where the price doesn't really reflect the company value. And you know, some of you are right. Um, it's really hard to predict whether a single company rises and falls. Think about Enron. At one point, it was really powerful. Then it just crashed one day. So how do we address that risk when we can't control the markets and we don't know the fate of an individual company? Um, the answer is buying index funds. So an index fund is a bundle of stocks. Um, for example, the S&P 500 is a really popular one. Um, it's of the top five largest 500 largest companies in the US. So while it's hard to predict whether a single company will succeed or fail, it's really rare that the top 500 companies in the US will all tank at the same time. And if they do, we have much larger problems than just a dip in the stock market. The biggest risk that you can um, due to your money is actually doing nothing. Even leaving your money um, in a bank account um, at 0.5% uh, interest rate when inflation rate is 6.8% or higher is deteriorating um, any potential purchasing power that it has. We've talked about how um, powerful compound interest is and it works in the reverse. So any money that you're losing now, you'll continue to lose more because that's money that you could have put in the stock market and gained in returns. So let's talk about these awesome tax advantage uh, investment accounts. So that way you get to keep more of the money that you earn and um, achieve um, the visions that you have for yourself. One is the 401k that is normally set up through your employer. Um, so they get to decide the provider um, as well with the fees and your investment options. Um, the contribution limit for this is really high. It's at um, $20,500 this year. And your employer will also um, often match some of that investment. So for example, 3% of your salary and if you have one takeaway from this talk, it's to max, um, max out your 401k match because that is 100% return. And there is nothing else in the world that will give you 100% return on your money. Um, and with the next one, it's called the IRA. It's one of my favorites. It stands for Individual Retirement Account. And this one you set up for yourself. So you can choose whatever provider you want and you can virtually invest in anything. Um, and there is one variant of this called the Roth IRA that I really like because it allows you to withdraw your contributions at any time. So it helps address the fear that we are locking away our money for a really long time. The contribution limit for this is a lot lower. Um, it's at about $6,000. The last one is the HSA, which is the health savings account. And you can only contribute to this if you have a um, high deductible health plan. But if you do qualify, I highly recommend maxing it out. And the reason why is that you save triple the tax. So the money that you have um, going into the account is not taxed. So you don't pay any federal or state income taxes on that. And the money that you earn also does not get taxed and you don't have to pay for any of the social security taxes. So I did my taxes for 2021 and between my employer match and um, the tax savings, I saved about $2,100. I really love designer purses and the HSA basically allowed me to buy a purse for myself for free. So think about that. Um, HSA is super underrated. Uh, think about how $2,100 can help you um, live out some of those values that you have for yourself. I want to close out this talk by uh, reminding you all that you are all very powerful investors. Um, you are all such bright and passionate people. And I know that you'll be able to leverage these investments to um, realize the visions um, that you have.
money is not good or evil. It's just a tool that enables you to live the life that you want. When we hear about unfortunate um, events um, that have to do with money, it's more reflective of the person who had the money than the money itself. We all deserve to have equal access to wealth and a financial safety net to ensure our well-being. I'm really honored to give this talk to here today because financial literacy is not something that's taught in schools and investments are such a powerful tool for us to make impact and to um, live the lives that we dream of. And my hope is that we can continue to spread this information to people who um, need it and that way we can move towards financial equality. When underrepresented folks have access to wealth, as we've seen in our own Ada community and through celebrities like Beyonce, they give back and help build their communities. You already have all that you need to make your money work for you instead of the other way around. So go out there, dream big, and fund that fabulous life that you deserve. Thank you so much for attending this talk. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to leverage the um, Slack channel or to email me at hello at champagneboss.co. Uh, I will be starting a weekly podcast that answers financial questions. So um, please um, help me out and uh, submit your questions. Thank you.